using the stencil buffer. As a scene is rendered, the renderer writes the colour of each pixel on the screen. As it does this, it uses a frame buffer. Usually this buffer comprises of 32-bit values, with the bits being used to store the red, green, blue and alpha channels, using 8 bits per channel. But as well as the frame buffer storing the final colour to pass to the display, there will be a Z buffer. This stores the distance from the camera to the pixel in the triangle being rendered. If the Z buffer contains a larger number than the Z distance to the current pixel fragment, then the current fragment is nearer to the camera and assuming no transparency, it can write over the one already in the frame buffer, updating the Z buffer as it does this. But Unity also has a stencil buffer. This is a buffer of 8-bit values, the same size as the frame buffer. Open the scene Shaders-63 in Unity and in Visual Studio open the shaders Shader-63A lit and Shader-63B lit. B is the one on the quad and A on the house. What we're aiming at is the quad effectively turns the house transparent, leaving a hole through so we can see what is inside the house. A bit like an x-ray. To do this we're going to use the stencil buffer and a custom shader for the quad and another custom shader for the house. Let's start with the quad shader. For this effect to work, the quad must be rendered before the house. By default, Unity orders the models by distance from the camera and renders them starting with the most distant. We want to force the rendering so that the quad is always rendered before the house. It's really easy to ensure this happens. Just add minus one after geometry in the queue assignment tag. Geometry is replaced with the integer value 2000. Using geometry minus 1, the Q value is now 1999. So it will be rendered first. Since we're creating a hole, we don't really want the quad to render its own pixels. There are several ways to achieve this, but the easiest by far is to set the colour mass value to 0. That simply informs Unity to ignore writing to the frame buffer for this shader. That is exactly what we want. Enter colour mask 0, just below the tagline. Since this shader is not affecting the frame buffer, we can also stop it right into the Z buffer, using Z right off. If we switch back to Unity, you can see that the quad has now disappeared. But you can find it using the scene view. It's still part of the scene, but does not directly affect the frame buffer. We're nearly done for the quad, all we need to do now is write to the stencil buffer. Enter stencil, ref1, comp always, pass, replace. There are three things happening here. 1. If we write to the stencil buffer, then the value it will write will be 1. This is set using the ref property. 2. Whatever's in the stencil buffer for the current fragment is compared. The operations we can use are shown here. Using the operation always, means we're always going to do whatever the pass operation says. 3. The final entry in the stencil section is the pass operation. We use replace. Because we set the comp operation to always, this means that the value 1 will be written to the stencil buffer for each rendered pixel or fragment for the triangles that use this shader. The other operations are shown here. Although we've completed this shader, it will not create the hole I promised, but the preparation work's done. Wherever the quad is on screen, the stencil buffer will have the value 1, assuming no other shader overwrites it later in the rendering queue. I know for the scene we're considering that there are no other shaders doing that, so we can move on to shader 63A lit, the one applied to the house. For this one, we want to only paint a pixel when the stencil buffer is not equal to 1. Before I show how this is done, see if you can work out how to do it. Pause the video and give it a try. It's simply a case of adding a stencil block with values for ref, comp and pass. How did you do? Hopefully you all realise that ref has to be 1. It has to match the value we set in the quad shader. Then the comparison operation is simply not equal. And for pass, we do not want to overwrite the current value so we just use keep. But there's a problem. Now we can see inside the house, 
there is no back to the walls. It would be better if front facing triangles use the stencil and back facing triangles ignore the stencil. Thankfully this is easily achieved for our current shader just add cull back just before the CG program line. Then copy from stencil to NCG and paste it in again. So you now have it twice. For the second version change cull back to cull front and for the stencil comp operation change it to always, effectively ignoring the stencil since we're not writing to it and yet this pixel is always rendered. Now we can see the back face of the walls through the hole. I'm sure you'll have custom operations that will benefit from the use of a stencil. Remember when you write to a stencil it should be earlier in the queue than when you read the buffer and respond to what's in the buffer. Also remember that the purpose of the comparison operation is to decide which pixels to get past this comparison and make it to the frame buffer and the pass operation can affect the buffer or leave it as it is. In this video we saw one great way in which we can clip the output of a shader but there's also a function built into the CG programming language that does this for you. This video comes from my Unity Shader course. Get the full course for a great discount by following this link. See the description for a link to the resources.